Hello everyone, thank you for being with me. I'd like to talk this time about authority and leadership in a specific context because I watched so many videos and I talked with so many people and I think there's a, some misunderstanding what leadership and authority means. Sometimes I feel that it's been seen from the point of view of a status symbol or something that complements the ego or from a point of view of acknowledgement and being recognized and the point of view of charisma and a point of view of I'm a leader and I'm deciding and so many times that is so destructive that I as a freelance or as a, a sovereign artist who's financing my own project who's creating my own projects who's creating my own business who's paying the price for my own mistakes and my own successes I can't afford that you might use such concepts or such interpretations of leadership and authority in a business that is financed by the government, where mistakes are anyway paid by the taxpayer and not by you personally or by the decision maker. But in businesses where the decision maker pays the price of his decisions, I can't afford that interpretation of leadership and authority because for me leadership and authority is about responsibility not about a status symbol and not about acknowledgement and in this context if i see someone who's trying to promote his agenda or his point of view that i can see that it's based upon ignorance and upon a whim i will shut that thing down with no even any need for a debate because there's no logic about it and i'll explain myself you are in a car and you are the responsible. You are the one who's driving the car. Perhaps we've talked about it also in the past. And suddenly there's a child in the car with his mom. And the child feels, wow, this car, this is a nice game. Wow. If he drives like this and he's deciding when to go left and when to go right, I also want to play a little bit. Let me drive a little bit, just five seconds. I just want to sit on the wheel for five seconds. The one who's driving the car, in this context, he's the only one who knows how to drive a car. He's the only one who knows how to navigate. The only one who's aware of the consequences of mistakes. The only one who is, because he's responsible, he's going to pay the price of any accident that happens. He's the decision maker. So if there is, or there are in the car, another two, three, four people, who would try to pressure the driver emotionally and say, come on, man, just, just be a human being. Just be nice. Just, just, just be empathic. Just let, the, just let the, the child drive. He just wants to enjoy a moment. He just uh, be, be, be empathic. Understand, this is a child. Come on, don't argue with a child. Come on, come on, just let him drive. Would you let the child drive? Or you would say, hey, everyone, shut the F up. I am deciding. It's not about your opinions anymore. You can be 20 people ignorant, have no idea, no conception of what is the consequences of such act. Now, all of you need to decide. Either I drive the car or I'm out. But I will not allow the child to sit on the wheel or any one of you to sit on the wheel. It's not democracy here. I understand that there is, you go on LinkedIn and you go on certain places where you see a leader is giving, is not micromanaging, is allowing you, you know, a perspective on employee who has no access to the big picture. So they start to form a consensus about what leadership is and what authority is and what a good leader should look like and what a bad leader is should look like. He's dictatorship, he's not listening to opinions. Here. We need to see the difference, first of all, between a system, between the systems. If you work in a system that can tolerate chaos and you have endless access to the tax money where you can fix mistakes and not hold the decision maker accountable, in that place, do whatever you want. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a private business who's supposed to deliver where the decision maker and the owner of the business pays the price of failures, where we personally pay the price of failures. Um, and such a thing, we cannot tolerate this Dunning-Kruger effect, we talked about it in the past, where someone thinks he knows something, 
someone might learn something new and they say, wow, I hacked the system. I know, I know everything about it. Those people that take one workshop or read one book of psychology or read or talk to one person and in that moment open something and they think, oh, now I'm in a new dimension. I hacked that system and now I'm an expert. And sometimes those people happen to be also that because they were too protected in their childhood, their breath and their diaphragm are free. So they have an authoritarian voice and they have conviction of nothing can go wrong because um, their habits, are, they've always been protected. They've never been held accountable. So they are overconfident. That might project authority, might project confidence, but that doesn't mean that they know what they're doing. That doesn't mean that they know what they're doing. And unfortunately, because if they take one workshop or they read one book that opens a little bit or shows them a hint, they think that, oh, I know it all. And they start to talk with conviction and people who are not aware of the big picture might confuse them for experts. And in a debate where this loser, this person that doesn't know what he or she are talking about, yet they talk with conviction and charisma, and they preach about leadership and about authority and about the business and about when someone is driving the car and he sees the big picture, you will not allow neither the child nor his mom that is crying and crying and the child is crying and he wants to drive and just like five seconds, just like five seconds to drive. You will be so strict in shutting down those people that you will look very bad. You will look a dictator. You will look inhumane from their point of view, the point of view of the majority with the wishful thinking that they know what they're doing and they have no idea. That they have no idea. So here, they want to experience the idea of authority and leadership, that they make decisions and they are recognized and they are acknowledged as leaders and they have charisma and they can exercise some of this needs, getting their ego complemented. This kind of authority is not made for the private sector. It's not made for people who create their own businesses with their own hands. Here, authority is a responsibility. It's the ability to respond. If the driver allows the child to drive, it means that the driver has no idea what he's doing. He doesn't know, he doesn't see the big picture. Because if an accident happens, the driver will pay the price and the child would say, I don't know, I don't know, oops, sorry. And the mother would say, yeah, yeah, but he's, he's uh, responsible. The driver, is, uh, the, the mother that was so eager to let her little child enjoy a moment of experiencing uh, uh, glory. She would be the first one also to throw the, the professional under the bus, the driver under the bus. And even if there's somebody in the car, the owner of the car, let's say he's also in the car, and he says, uh, Mr. Driver, Mr. Expert, this is my car, and please allow the little child to drive. The expert should say, okay, Mr. Owner of the car, I'm out. It's your car. But I will not be in the car while this drives. The allegory here tells the story of how many people have no idea what they're talking about. They have social validation of people just like them who have no idea what they're talking about. And they try to conspire against an expert just to take the leadership from him because they think leadership is about ego and pride and he knows that leadership is about responsibility and authority is about responsibility. It's not about playing games. And here also, in the context of the Dunning-Kruger effect, they are being validated by the majority because the majority also cannot differentiate between someone who knows what he's talking about and somebody who doesn't know but he's overconfident. So I hope I could explain that because I go on LinkedIn and it blows my mind how people see things and you can see that they are bringing memes and concepts that have nothing to do with reality. Now, when I see that there is an authority that is trustworthy and responsible and leads to success, I have no problem to follow. But I'll trust that they are leading me to success and not to self-destruction. It's not about ego, guys. It's not about ego. It's not about pride. It's about responsibility. It's about expertise. It's about knowledge. It's about 
achieving success, survival, and hopefully then transcendence. So thank you for being with me. I hope I could shed some light on this. I'm Shuridi Jabarin. Ciao.